towards the end of the time that I was in Oxford, I uh, had a colleague and uh, still a friend uh, after, what, 60 plus years, nearly, uh, uh, Anthony Allison. And Anthony was very interested in um, um, in field field research. He grew up in uh, East Africa, and spent a good part of his youth, you know, tramping around the jungles. He was uh, very um, involved in um, study of birds and butterflies. He was a good natural historian, and he lived out in a, in a, on a on a plantation that his father ran. So uh, Tony was very interested in field work, and he uh, was particularly interested in, in polymorphisms. You know, polymorphisms are, uh, the, the term is known much more now. Uh, they're uh, loci, uh, genetic loci, where you have uh, different variants controlled by different alleles, and uh, they very often, uh, two or more of the alleles, or even more, uh, will be fairly common in the population. Uh, so it's a um, it is a form of biochemical uh, diversity, and they're much better known now as SNPs. You know be, that's the technique that's used in molecular biology. But 1956, 57, when Tony and I, uh, well, when I kind of joined Tony in some of this research, Anthony Ellison. Uh, we you couldn't the, the genome wasn't uh, known you know and we and there wasn't very much that was before Watson and Crick and all, but you could study uh, uh, diversity in the serum proteins that is the products of the genes what's now proteomics, so rather than working at the gene level we worked at the product level at the phenotype level at the protein level, uh, where the rubber hits the road you know that's that's where the action takes place. And you could actually find uh, inherited variation uh, by using, initially we used a gel electrophoresis technique. And that had been invented by a chap named Oliver Smithies, who won the Nobel Prize a few years ago. Uh, and he had been a student of Sandy Oxen's two or three years pr prior to mine. And he was a great guy for inventing methods. Uh, but he uh, also was a really very good theorist. He was like he was like Sandy. He was really Sandy's Sandy Oxen student. He was mathematical, theoretical, and uh, and uh, had a real grasp of, of fundamental biology. Uh, but in any case, he invented this technique so using starch gel uh, in in electrophoretic um, apparatus, so you could separate um, biochemicals and serum proteins in particular on the basis not only of charge but of size and shape. And you got much more information about that. I, I speak to him uh, occasionally. The last time he said he learned about the starch gel from watching his mother, you know, in North England, um, make starch for uh, starching shirts. And it's a real technique to make the. But in any case, so we could use that to separate proteins. And that started on this big multi year project to study variation. And the, the, the basic concept was that uh, the first thing we would do, we'd look for variation in, in serum proteins and then infer genetic variation from that uh, using traditional genetic methods, that is family studies. And we'd study the variation in different parts of the world where you had different diseases, learn about it, chronicle it. And then since we're kind of in these locations, uh, Tony, both Tony and I had medical training. Uh, you in time would sort of figure out how a, a disease is related to the variation. To, to start with, we didn't know what disease. Uh, we knew we'd find something because disease is a big selective factor in in determining that uh, in which uh, uh, you know influence is well it's influenced by diversity. Uh, but it leads to changes in the frequency of genes. And uh, you would expect to find, if, and particularly we're working in places where diseases were, were rampant, I mean, like in the tropics, where you, where you have an epidemic, you know, it kills 10% of the population. So, uh, so we spent, you know, I mean, I spent the next 
10 years, every summer, and uh, we'd organize, I mean, it took all year to organize the field trips, and we'd go to some place we hadn't been before, which is essentially the criterion, uh, in, but where there was a great deal of variation. Now, the overall goal of that was what's now called personal medicine, or one aspect of personal medicine, and that is if you could find people who are at high risk, and the important part is identify the environmental factor that interacted with this genetic hereditary, genetic variation, uh, then you'd be able to figure out some good things that people who were at high risk uh, could uh, take, uh, measures they could take to um, uh, prevent their getting sick. And the hepatitis discovery and the vaccine came directly from that idea. When we started, we didn't know it would be hepatitis we'd be dealing with, but we knew it would be something because that's how, the, that's the uh, variation uh, and the increase in gene frequencies of particular variants is a consequence of these external environmental factors like viruses. So the, the rest of the story is how, how we discovered the, the virus.